Physiology SAQ 8. A. What is closing capacity and under what situation can this impact on arterial oxygen tension? 4 marks. Closing capacity is the lung capacity when small airways begins to close. Closing capacity equals closing volume plus residual volume. Closing volume is the volume of gas over and above the residual volume that remains in the lungs when the small airways begins to close. Residual volume is the volume of gas that remains in the lungs after a maximal forced expiration. Airway closure usually does not occur during tidal breathing as the closing capacity is normally smaller than FRC. When the closing capacity is larger than FRC, airway closure begins to happen during tidal breathing. Airway closure occurring within FRC results in increased shunt, which is perfusion without accompanying ventilation, and this results in reduced arterial oxygen tension due to VQ mismatch. As airway closure usually occurs in the basal or dependent zone of the lung, this may worsen ventilation perfusion mismatch, since this basal or dependent zone of the lung is relatively well perfused in comparison to the apical zone. Causes of increased closing capacity includes increasing age, CC equals FRC in neonates and infants, CC equals FRC in the supine position at 44 years, and in the upright position at 66 years. Increasing age results in increased shunt and thus normal PaO2 falls steadily with aging, which can be calculated using the formula 100 minus H divided by 4. Closing capacity also increases with increased intrathoracic pressures, such as due to asthma or COPD, smoking, LV failure, increased abdominal pressure, for example, obesity, pregnancy and surgery, decreased pulmonary blood flow, and pulmonary parenchymal disease, which decreases compliance. A mnemonic to remember causes of increased closing capacity is CLOSE, which stands for cigarettes, LV failure, old age, surgery, and emphysema. Closing capacity may encroach upon a FRC reduced by obesity, pregnancy, and supine position, and general anesthesia. Closing capacity decreases with PEEP and CPAP, which reduces airway closure, reduces shunt, and improves oxygenation. What are the various methods used in the measurement of closing volume? Describe one method in detail, 6 marks. Various methods used to measure closing volume includes the single breath nitrogen washout test or Fowler's method and tracer gas analysis such as xenon or helium. Single breath nitrogen washout test or Fowler's method. The subject takes a breath of 100% oxygen and exhales through a one-way valve measuring nitrogen content and volume. During slow exhalation, all the expired gas is collected and analyzed. The concentration of nitrogen is plotted on a curve against the expired total volume of gas. The exhalation is separated into four phases. During phase 1, dead space gas or pure oxygen passes the nitrogen analyzer first so no value on the y-axis. During phase 2, there is a mixture of dead space gas and alveolar gas exhaled, a vertical line that intercepts this curve such that area A equals area B. Volume expired at this intercept is the anatomical dead space. Phase 3, when pure alveolar gas passes the analyzer, a plateau is reached. The plateau occurs as alveolar gas with a steady nitrogen content is exhaled. Phase 4. Final upstroke occurs at closing volume. At closing capacity, small airways begins to close, leading to preferential exhalation from the larger diameter upper airways. These airways contain more nitrogen as they are less well ventilated, so the initial concentration of nitrogen within them was not diluted with oxygen during the first breath of 100% oxygen. The volume expired from the start of this rise to the end of the maximal expiration is the closing volume. The volume of gas remaining in the lungs at the end of this maximal expiration is the residual volume. Closing capacity may be found by adding closing volume to residual volume measured by multiple breath nitrogen washout test, helium dilution method or body platysmography.
but since the nitrogen analyzer is in use, multiple breath nitrogen washout test is preferred in the measurement of residual volume. Additional information. Tracer gas analysis method using helium to measure closing volume. The subject inspires a bolus marker gas such as helium at the end of maximal expiration, i.e. residual volume, followed by inspiration of air to total lung capacity. Expired helium concentration is measured during slow expiration. The same phases are seen as in Fowler's method, which can also be used to measure closing capacity. Initially, dead space gas is exhaled, containing no helium, then a mixture of dead space and alveolar gas, followed by alveolar gas, which is the plateau. As closing capacity is reached, there is a sharp rise in expired helium. This is because alveoli that are still open at closing capacity contain a higher concentration of helium than the mean because they received a larger amount of the initial inspired bolus. Helium is chosen as the tracer gas as it is not absorbed, not produced by the body, has a short equilibration time and is cheaper than xenon. FRC and RV can be measured by nitrogen washout test, helium dilution or body platysmography.